Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moonlit Raven. For today's video, I thought about doing something different. I kind of wanted to just do, um, I know we're like, I'm a couple of weeks, like maybe three weeks, almost, almost a whole month late on Dia de los Muertos. But um, I didn't really get to do much of it this year. I didn't get to set up my ofrenda. Um, I usually do like my grandma and grandpa's picture and I'll do like their, their favorite, what their favorite treats were and stuff like that. Um, I didn't get to do it this year because as per my usual excuse, I've got a lot going on. <laughs> and um, this time I really do mean it with the baby and everything that we've been doing and then filming other videos and editing videos. I really do have a lot going on right now. Um, so I didn't get to do any of that, but I've had this fabric for the past like two, I don't know, maybe even three years now. And I've been wanting to make a dress out of it, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to make a dress to tell you the truth. Um, I don't know if I could find like a simple pattern, then I'll do that. Um, if not, the idea is if I don't make a dress out of it, whatever, I'll buy more of this fabric later and make a dress another time. Um, instead, I could do a kitchen apron, which actually kind of goes well. I don't know. I haven't fully decided yet, but um, a kitchen apron and it's, it's going to go kind of well with this. I found this at our local Bookman's and um, I got it for like eight bucks. And I was thinking maybe do the kitchen apron and then um, and then do um, some sugar cookies and paint them with my daughter. So I know she's been wanting to do another YouTube video with me. And uh, she's also been wanting to make cookies. So um, that's the idea. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I do that? Should I not? I don't know. If I do cookies though, I don't think I'm going to do like an actual from scratch um, sugar cookie recipe whatever um, just because I don't have time for that um, so I was thinking of maybe I know last time we did some sugar cookies out of just like the pre-made sugar cookie dough from Walmart so I might get one of those and just do it out of that do the cookie cutters and then make the icing with the confectioner sugar so i don't know let's let's see because i, I kind of want to do some sewing I've, i haven't done much sewing in the past year and i want to get slowly get back into the groove of it and uh i think this would be a great idea so i don't know let me think about it for a couple of minutes see what i decide if i can find a simple dress pattern then i'll do that if not, then I'll just do the kitchen apron. I don't know, I can't decide. But I guess, yeah, we'll see. We'll see when I get there. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, really quick, guys. I wanted to hop back on and actually open up the cookie cutters and show you guys because I didn't do that. And this is my first time opening them and actually looking at them too. And they're actually pretty cool. So it came with four of them. So this is the cookie cutter itself, right? It's like hollow on the end, uh, you know, obviously what a cookie cutter is. And then the other side is the stamp part. See, can you guys kind of see that? Um, so it's pretty cool. It has this pink one with this design. And then it's got this red one with this design. Let's see if you guys can see it. And then I like the colors of them too. I feel like the colors really fit the whole theme. And then it's got this one with this design. And then it has this green one with this floral design. So those are pretty cool. Hopefully these turn out really, really good. If not, I'm going to be really disappointed. Um, oh, it even gives you sugar cookie recipe on here, the little booklet. 
It says Fred's Tips for, okay, so that's the, real quick, sorry. That's the name, I don't know, that's the brand, I guess. It's Fred Sweet Spirits Cookie Cutters and Stamps. Genuine Fred, established 2004. Um, and the little instruction booklet comes with tips. It says Fred's Tips for Successful Stamped Cookies. One, roll just mixed dough between two sheets of parchment paper before you chill it. Don't forget to dust it lightly with flour before rolling. Tip number two, chill at least 30 minutes before cutting. It's easier to cut when it's cool, but you'll get a better impression when the dough has softened slightly. <clears throat> Tip number three, before cutting and stamping, pull the top sheet of parchment off and lightly dust the, flour, dust the dough with flour. Replace the parchment, flip over, and repeat. Tip four, to stamp cookies, dip both sides of the cutter into flour and tap off any excess. First, stamp the image by pressing evenly into the dough. Flip over the cutter and press down to cut dough. Tip number five, place cut cookies on a lined cookie sheet and bake in the center of a preheated oven. Let cookies cool completely before decorating. Six, use royal icing to decorate. Mixes available at your local craft store. So, um... Sorry, I'm just like reading it and trying to process the instructions. I'm definitely not. I am so terrible at following directions. And my husband says that to me all the time. He's like, you don't know how to follow directions. You're terrible. I am terrible at it. I do have to admit. I have to like read over something like at least four or five times for me to process it. I'm like, hold on, wait. Let me plan it out step by step. Um, But yeah, hopefully these can turn out okay. And I'm going to try to follow all the directions for once in my life. I'm going to try to follow directions. Um, I'm going to try to really follow um, the step-by-step -step tips to see, you know, if hopefully they work. Or I don't know, maybe I'm just terrible at it if they don't come out right. Um, and then, yeah, it's got, it says Fred's Family Favorites Sugar Cookies. And it's got the recipe for the sugar cookies. I don't know why I always put it up to the camera because it it's reverse. In the camera view so you can't read it <laughs> I don't know why I do that but anyways it's one cup of unsalted butter one cup of sugar one large egg one teaspoon of vanilla extract three cups of flour one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and half a teaspoon of salt and then of course it's got the directions for that but I'm not gonna read that whole thing preheat oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit in a standing mixture cream butter and sugar until light and fluffy blah 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 Oh, it's got other recipes too. So this one's for gingerbread cookies. This, oh, chocolate cookies. I might have to do that one. Chocolate cookies. Oh, and those are the only ones. The rest of the instructions are like in other languages. Yeah. But that's still pretty cool. It's got the regular, the classic sugar cookie recipe. It's got... The um, gingerbread cookies recipe <clears throat> and the chocolate cookies recipe plus the instructions and the tips for doing the cookies that's pretty cool but I'm not gonna actually make the dough I'm just gonna buy pre-made dough so that's what that's where my life is at right now um, <laughs> yeah so we'll see how these turn out hopefully they come out pretty cool but I just wanted to show you guys real quick the cookie cutters stamp slash cookie cutters these things are pretty cool um i think we'll have a lot of fun making them pretty cool so yeah all right i'm gonna get back to it and figure out my sewing my little mini sewing project we'll see where we go with that and then hopefully i'll see you guys here in a couple of minutes ready with a all done sewing project finished sewing project and um ready to go sugar cookie dough for these. See you guys in a bit. So I'm basically just gonna cut a rectangular square um, about 18 inches um, from here to here. So I'm gonna cut that and then um, we'll move on to the next step. 
Okay, so I did just cut out the rectangular part for the bottom of my apron. Um, so this is gonna be it pretty much for the bottom. Um, next, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out and cut the top half of my apron where it's gonna be like the chest part. Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and do that and then I'll show you guys that. Okay. Um, so the next part is going to be the chest part, which let me show you the little, <laughs> excuse me. Um, the next part is going to be, um, the chest part, which let me show you the little drawing that I did. Okay. So it's kind of, this is kind of the idea that I have. Sorry, I have really crappy drawing and, um, this might not make sense to anybody else, but it makes sense to me. But anyway, so I want to do like a little heart bust sort of for the top half of the apron. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, get that measured and cut out. Um, I'm going to do that and then I'm probably going to have to stop very soon and then just continue this video and continue sewing later on or I don't know, we'll see because... I gotta feed the baby again. He just nursed, honestly, like just 15 minutes ago. But um, I'm gonna feed him again because I usually like to do that before I go pick up my daughter, which that's what I have to do here pretty soon is go pick up my daughter from school. Um, so, yeah, we'll see you when we see you then. All right, bye. Okay, I'm gonna try to film this. My GoPro is dead, so go figure. But um, let's see if I can film it like this. Okay, so the top of the chest piece in total, I need it to be how much? 13, uh, 13 inches wide. Um, so I'm folding it in half because obviously I want it to be symmetrical on both sides. So seven and a half is as far as I need it to come out. I'm going to use my chalk. Oh, I hope you can see. So seven and a half is as far as I need it to come out pretty much. And then I'm going to use my curved ruler to make the, the heart shape. So here's my guideline. good enough so there's my guideline of how far I need it to come out so what I will do is I think I will I mean, it doesn't have to be like perfect perfect I actually could have used this too seven and a half is right here yeah so I'm doing it this way. But we'll do it like this. I'm just going to go like this. So there's my guide to cut it like that. And then just finish following the curve, might as well. Um, let me set that aside. And then I had measured that I want it to go The sides about 10 inches so I do have the fabric folded in half I probably should have mentioned that but I do have the fabric folded so I have a fold on this side so that way again like I said so it's when I cut it it's symmetrical but let me move these real quick I measured that I wanted the sides to be so I want the top half to be a little bit small I don't want it to be like a big bulky sort of apron. I kind of want it to be something sort of cute, I guess, if that makes sense. 
So for the sides, I think, let me look at my measurements real quick on my paper. I think I was going to go with 10 and then the bottom 13. So the sides 10. Let me put my ruler up here. I got this one. So I'm actually going to have to measure out the bottom first because then, because I want it to kind of angle downwards a little bit, if that makes sense. I don't want it to be boxy. I want it to angle inwards, kind of like it's like a waist, like how, I don't know, like how you would tie it around. I don't know. It doesn't make sense, but it'll make sense when it's done. So from this point to there, what did I say? Ten inches. Sorry, I'm looking at my measurements and they're like all the way over here. Thirteen. Okay, so thirteen. So from here to here, we're gonna go ten because that's what I had measured. I'm just gonna depend. So I'm just gonna use that to like mark. And then I wanted to go thirteen this way. Oh no, that's right, I have to do it. Okay, I had to check something real quick, but I got my measurements. Um, okay, so I gotta do six and a half inches this way for the bottom. So, let me scoot up. If it, if it does happen to go out of the camera angle, sorry about that. All right, so what did I say? Six and a half. With all the blue and patterns on here, I'm having a hard time seeing. Five, yeah, that's six right there. Here we go. So six and a half is right there. Okay. So now I wanted... I want it to be in, in total 10, yeah. So I want it to kind of angle inwards, if that makes sense, which I hope it does. And if not, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about once I cut it. All right, so there we go. This is gonna be the top half of my apron or the bodice as you would call it for like a dress or um right so you see it's gonna be cut like this all right so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece out and I usually like to use my ruler just to help me stay on like a guided track for cutting it Way. Let me scoop this up. Watch that I don't get my finger. Okay, and then this will just follow the line. We'll set this aside and then use my roller. There we go. And then the scrap. Okay, let me unfold it so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. There we go. See? Does that make sense? So this is going to be the top half. I'm probably going to put some ruffles around, I don't know, maybe the bottom or the top. I don't know. We'll see when we, once I start putting it together, we'll see how it looks and what I think about it. But this is going to be the top half of the apron. All right, I'm back. Um, I had to go change. And um, 
been working on this project all day, but then again, that's to be expected when you've got kids and uh, you're nursing a baby, you gotta pick up kids from school, gotta go run errands, you know, the mom drill. If you're a mom, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and if you hear kids, my kids screaming, they're playing the switch in the living room on the TV. So they get, they tend to get pretty competitive. Um, okay. All right. So what I have now is some, um, white fabric, some like plain white fabric. Um, and what I'm going to do is for the bodice, I want it to obviously have like a lining for the, the back part of it. Um, just one, so it's a little bit more stable and two, just so it doesn't look so, um, plain, I guess. And yeah, cause it's, it's just real thin and flimsy. I don't mind, you know, the bottom part, that'll be fine. But for at least for the top part, usually for a bodice, you always want it to have, um, a little bit more stability, uh, just because it's going to be tight. It's going to be a little, you know, um, I might do interfacing on it to give it even more stability I might not I don't know it just depends because I think I have some somewhere um, but we'll see how it um, I'm gonna pin these two together and see how it feels I don't know I'm gonna play it as I go wing it again like most of my life I just wing it um, okay so what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the back the lining piece for the bodice of the apron and then whatever's left over I plan on using it as like let me show you my drawing I plan whatever's left of left over of the white fabric I plan on using it for like a little I'm gonna sew it to hang like a little drying cloth onto the bottom if that makes sense I know I say that a lot but <laughs> all right anyways let's just get on with it all right so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera around and sorry the angle is going to be kind of bad like i said my gopro i think it needs a new battery because the battery doesn't last as long um right there that should be fine oh and if you can see the baby over here <laughs> i'm trying to point um, yeah, I've got him in here with me. He's asleep. I just finished nursing him and he's asleep in his little bouncer. Okay, so I'm just going to trace and yes, I'm using a pen. Shame on me. But, um, by the way, this is in no way whatsoever a tutorial. I do not trust myself enough to be able to be well coordinated enough to do a tutorial okay, or to teach anybody any sewing so um yeah just to put that out there this is just me trying to yeah this is just me doing this on my own trying to I'm sorry if you hear my kids, they're wild and crazy. But then again, what kids aren't? Especially when they're playing video games. Okay, all right, so I got it traced out. I'm gonna set my main bodice piece to the side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out, which I'm gonna do it like this, this way. Let me get my... And I'm just going to follow the line. Yep, there we go. And I'm going to turn it and do that for the rest. You really bunch all of the stuff. Here we go. I'm going to do this side now. Make sure it's flat. 
I feel it bunging up somewhere here. Mm, yeah, it's all right. Just making sure the fabric's not bunched up. Probably went out of out of the camera angle, but I mean, there's not a whole lot to it. Just cutting some white fabric and nearly cutting off my fingers too. All right, so I'm gonna set the extra fabric to the side because I am gonna use that for, like I said, that little hand drying part of the apron. But there we go. And I will probably go, not probably, I will go iron these on the ironing board so that way they're very, um, so I can get all these creases out. But then I'm going to put them, put the, um, there's no right or wrong side on the white one, obviously, but on the printed fabric, I'm going to put it, um, face down, pin it sew it around, leave um, an opening here at the bottom so I could flip it inside out. And um, yeah, so I'll show you guys when I get there. But I'm gonna pause the camera for now because I, don't, I really don't need to record ironing this stuff. I mean, you guys all know what that is. All right, I'll be right back.